Hi, Tommy. Hey, how's it going? I like to... Yeah, nice to have you here. So tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Yes, absolutely. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. My name is Tommy. I'm a, I'm a software engineer, engineer turned machine learning engineer. I worked at Airbnb for over five years and then left and started a company called Mage. And what we do is we, we build tools for data scientists, machine learning engineers. And the, and the tool I want to show you today is a, it's an open source notebook for building and deploying data pipelines. Awesome. So I'll jump right into it. So what this is, is you get the best world of a notebook where you, the best parts of a notebook would be this interactive Python environment, the visualizations, charts, et cetera. But then you also get the best parts of, of a, a text editor. You get the great software engineering practices with modular code, reusable, testable code. And so how this works is you can add cells normally like you would in a any Jupyter notebook like I do one plus one just like this I can paste in some uh, arbitrary code for let's say map plot live I can plot anything um, just like just like this let me paste in some code just to see if it works okay well I have to install some files so let me go ahead and do map plot live here I can put all my dependencies in a file easily just install like I would normally uh, in a in a Jupyter notebook. So requirements.txt, just like that. Now, along the way as well, I can test out code. Let's say I wanted to try out some code. Uh, let's say I wanted to fetch some data from online, for example. I can just write that code out here. So let me just paste in some code here. Just I'm just going to test out some code because you know, the, the normal workflow would be try out some code in a notebook and then see if it works and then eventually convert that to a, a script. So here, let's see if that works. Okay, cool. So my test code works. So now what I would normally do is I would, I would write out some code and convert it to a pipeline. So in this demo, what I want to show is let's fetch data from an online endpoint, just some restaurant data. Let's explore it, visualize it. Let's do some transformations on it, add some columns, et cetera. And then let's save that transform data back to, let's say my Postgres database. So let's go ahead and start. Now, some concepts in this is there's these, you might wonder what are these four blocks or cells? I added a scratch pad cell, which is basically throwaway code or testing code or prototype code. When you actually wanna start building out your pipeline, you add one of these three blocks or cells. And the, each of these maps to an individual file. So here I'm going to add a data loader. I can add a, a, a generic base one, or we have a lot of helper templates. Let's we're, we're fetching data from an API, so let's go ahead and do that. So you see here, I'm going to name this load data from internet. Okay. Now this is a standalone file, and you can see here it's, it's a single file. So you can reuse this across your pipelines uh, code review is a lot easier. It's just a single file. Hey, have you ever tried to code review a notebook? It's, it makes you want to pull your hair out. Okay, so now we have this here. Let's go ahead and paste in a, a URL to fetch some data. So I have some data online that I, I can just paste in here. Now I'm going to run this. And I can see the output of that right here. I can sample code. I can expand this table on the right-hand side. Let me go ahead and collapse this left side. And I have some charts here if I want to dig that, dig deeper. Now, beyond that, ju not just this, I can start charting it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some data. I can click this part and add a chart. Let's add a bar chart, for example. Let's look at, okay, so we see that there is, there's a user ID column. There is a meal transaction ID. So let's see if users have more than one uh, meal or more than one restaurant that they've been to. So we'll group by user ID. We can aggregate count distinct meal transaction ID and we can press away. Awesome. So we can see that there are users with certain IDs. Like for example, this user, wow, they ate 14 times. They were hungry. Okay, so you know, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to chart that. Now, you can use these, these drop downs to do it, or you can actually write your own custom code to parse the data. So very, very flexible. Another chart I want to show, um, let's look at a pie chart and look at 
actually, no, no, not pie chart. Let's look at a histogram. There is a column for ratings. So, so people will give these restaurants ratings. Let's just look at the distribution of ratings to see if, if people give an even amount of, of ratings across one, two, three, and four, and five. So here, easily, we just click rating, press play. And we can see that barely anybody gives four. Most people mostly give three and five. Awesome. Now we've added our first block in this pipeline. Let's go ahead and add another one. Let's add one for transformer. So here for transformer, we're going to actually, you can write any code in here. So you see how this one inherits from the parent one. I can name this um, you know, transform awesome data, just like this. I can write any code in here, but what I actually want to do is I want to add a column for number of meals per user. Now I can, you know, write some group by logic in here, which, which I can, or I want to show you something. I want to show you some templates that you can use. So we could do aggregate, aggregate by distinct count. And there's a little bit of an API here. You can read the docs here. It's just a helper function. If you are more comfortable with using, you know, current libraries, you know, go ahead. You can totally do that. So here I'm going to do meal transaction ID. I'm going to group by user ID, and then I'm going to name the column number number of meals. Awesome. Let's go ahead and execute that. And ta-da, I have now number of meals. Awesome. So now I just transform that. Uh, let me let me rename this again. Uh, transform. You can also add as many transformations as you need. I can add another one right here. I can have this one actually depend on the parent, dot depend on this one. And then I can keep, this will run in parallel. But you can also have some transformers that also depend on other transformers as well. Now, finally, the last thing I wanna do is I got my transform data. Let's go ahead and save this to my Postgres database. You know, if I have Snowflake, I can do that. If I have some other ones, I can do that as well. So here I'm gonna click Data Explorer. Again, you can use no template or you can use the templates that we have available. So here's for Postgres. Uh, the schema is public. Table name is, uh, let's do transformed restaurant data demo, one, two, three. Awesome. Now, before I do this though, I actually need to add some credentials in here. So you can save your credentials in this YAML file and you can use environment variables. Let me go ahead and paste some, some credentials in. And, and these credentials are, are public just because we have them in a tutorial. So here I'm gonna paste this in, save. Now let's go ahead and execute this pipeline. Okay, so we're, it's executing, executing. And he executes the running. entire thing, right? Uh, so yep, execute, it executes uh... the entire thing. Yep. And uh, yep. what and happens is you concatenate all these files because you have like a file in data exporters and data loaders and uh, uh, like in all these folders and you somehow concatenate all of them and run or how does it work? Yep, exactly. Yes, yes. So these, the data, so each block and you decorate it. So you can name it anything you want. You can write as much code in here as you want as long as you decorate one of the functions with data loader and it will output and depending on what backing uh, storage you use, but it will output a, a file and that file gets accessed by its children and so on. So here I was able to run the entire pipeline and, and this gives you a, a convenience uh, way to test the pipeline while you're developing it. But in production, it's easy as just calling mage run and passing your pipeline name. Now, you know, it worked, but don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and try it out and see if it actually saved. So again, we can just do, uh, we can do a data loader. Let's do our Postgres query. Let's do select star from, uh, what was this table name right here? Right here. So here we're just gonna fetch that data from, from Postgres and let's go ahead and run that. Awesome. So look at this it has that number of meals column. So it did work, it did save. So now that I'm done, all I have to do, even with all these, let me, let me delete this because this was a test one. Even with the scratch pad block, when I commit my code, all you'll see is these three files committed. So now my teammate only has to review these files. 
I can also put some, some uh, tests in line as well to test the output of the data. Once I commit this, if you don't have your own pipeline engine, we do provide a pretty comprehensive data pipelining engine that specializes in data workloads. Or if you use things like Airflow or Prefect, we have native integrations with that. Couple lines to get all of your pipelines to run as DAGs in those existing pipeline engines. And so that concludes the demo. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm just wondering, what do you use under the hood? Like, do you use something like IPython, Jupyter, or something like this? Good question. We do use the Jupyter client, which then has the Jupyter server. And that's that's what we do use underneath the hood. But the user interface, we have to build from scratch because- mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that I can see. Mm -hmm. um, and then like you can configure like different, to use different kernels or how, how does it work? Yes. Yep, you can use different kernels. There is so let's let's let me just close these out. Um, it's hard to see. Yes, you can use uh, right now. We have a uh -huh, Python kernel and a PySpark kernel, and we're constantly adding more. We have a native PySpark integration as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, without it, uh, like uh, when you commit it to GitHub, there are only mm -hmm. these files, right? Yes, only these files. Let me show a sample of what that looks like. Uh, one second, let me go on this guide. And, and then how do you start it? Is it like in like Jupyter Notebook, something like this, you write Mage Notebook or? Yep, absolutely. So here's, it's just a single file, very easy to review. Let me show you what it actually looks like. Can you, can you make it larger a bit? Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, let me, is this, yeah, is this good? Yeah, that's good, yeah, that's good. Awesome. So really easy. So you can use it using Docker or you can use pip. So if you use mm -hmm. pip, you do pip install and then you sorry and then you do mage in it right here mm -hmm. so you do you do initialize your project name now you can use any you don't have to use a name we'll do a default one for you but you can do let's say demo or you know like um, my your team name then you do mage start and you tell it which project you want and let me sh show you what that looks like you see this this is a project i named it demo you can have diff many different projects but what you want to do is you want to share, you want to work in the same project because then you can have multiple pipelines in the same project, which then you can share different files over. So let's say I just create a new, new, uh, new pipeline. Maybe I want to create my own data loader, but maybe I want to have the same transform, transform data. So I can add it to my pipeline and it actually references the same file. So then you can get a lot of reusability through that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like it looks like a big and comprehensive and complex project. So I'm wondering how many people actually work on this. Is it you alone or there there is 100 people? Something <laughs> yeah, in between. It, it, yes, it, it feels like there's 100 people. No, there's a there's a there's eight of us. Well, we have eight people in the company. So there's there's we have four engineers, and so yeah, we've been um, all just working on this now uh, every every day. <laughs> So you probably have a dedicated front-end person, right? Because it looks very yes. slick. It's very nice. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yep. We have a, we have a few of those dedicated front engineers and we have some machine learning engineers and backend engineers all working on this. And we we're fortunate to have some also contributors from the community as well. Yeah, speaking of contributors, so maybe how can somebody contribute? What's the process? Yes. Yes, we welcome all contributions. We love it. You know, anyone can contribute. There's folks that contribute to improving the documentation, which is very important. But if you want to contribute to the code base, and you know, one of all, one of the core principles that we have is beyond just the scalability, production ready code, is the third one is extensibility. So we made it really, really easy to extend. We have documents on if you want to, let's say, add more templates, for example, or if you want to add more chart types. You know, we provide quite a few chart types. We didn't add all of them, but we do provide ways in how you can easily add new charts, new templates for charts, and uh, just lots of different ways to, uh, to, to contribute without having to dig through the entire code base. So we do have this, if you go to our, our GitHub and you go to the contributing section, we do have a guide and we kind of walk you through which parts you want to contribute on. And if you join our Slack, we're always on there. We'd love to chat with people just about anything. Uh, and then we'd love to help with contributions as well. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, are you going to take part in Hacktoberfest this uh, this year? We 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 we've been talking about it. Yeah, we we love to. That be we we love participating in these things. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone who is watching this? Yes, yes, I do. One thing I tell uh, entrepreneurs or or hackers or developers is make sure you're always talking about your ideas, talking to people, you know, asking them about their ideas, and just constantly getting feedback. Also, help others where you can as well. Make sure you give back and um, just be kind and selfless. And uh, yeah, that's the main thing. That's what has helped us so far. Yeah, well, amazing. Thanks for putting this in open source. That's pretty selfless. Uh, like that, that couldn't get more selfless than that, right? So putting such an awesome product in open source, I really admire companies like and people like you who do this in the open. So yeah, kudos. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alexi. It was awesome to be here. Thank you so much for, for having me.